So hello and welcome to the Integrative Health Convention 2018 online interviews. So today we're going to talk uh, and find out a bit more about the three principles and Ian Watson, who's speaking here at the um, so we're speaking at the Integrative Health Convention this October on the 13th and 14th weekend at the Park Plaza Victoria in London. So the Integrative Health Convention is an annual convention in London featuring many leaders in the fields of complementary and conventional medi medical therapies, featuring uh, teachers from many different aspects who are involved in making people better. And we aim to get people better through various healing practices as an opportunity for doctors, therapists to meet, to share, to learn, and to connect with each other. We believe that true health is holistic and that people get better in more than just one way and that we all have so much to learn from each other. And the Integrative Health Convention provides a stage for, for this for therapists, for doctors and the public. So there are limited tickets available, so, so uh, they can be purchased at the integrativehealthconvention.co.uk. This is a series of online interviews which will help you get to know our speakers who are leaders in the different fields of uh, healing, therapy, teaching, or even medicine, and maybe help you decide which talk to attend out of the 36 talks to choose from over two days at the Integrative Health Convention. So I'm your host, uh, Dr. To Wong. I've been a GP for 12 years in Devon, and I'm the co-founder of Neurolinguistic Healthcare Limited, uh, who are the organizers of the Integrative Health Convention. Neurolinguistic Healthcare provides courses in advanced communication skills and therapeutic techniques, as well as training in hypnosis for healthcare providers. So today I'm speaking to one of our excellent speakers who's coming to the 2018 Integrative Health Convention uh, to share with you what they know and to tell us a little bit about who they are, what they do, and what to expect from their talk at the convention. So this is Ian Watson. Hi, Ian. Hi, thanks for inviting me. Sure. So Ian's uh, the founder of the Insight Space, who he's a, an author, educator and consultant, and he's worked in the field of well-being, self-healing and inner transformation since 1988. Um, his de details of his uh, work can be found at theinsightspace.com, and I'll put the link below. Uh, OK, great. Oh, Ian, should, so should we begin by letting the audience know a little bit more about yourself that I didn't cover? Yeah, yeah certainly. Um, so as you mentioned, I've, I've, I've worked in the field of uh, natural healing and um, well-being since 1988, which is what, 30 years now. And um, my work started uh, initially using natural medicines, herbal medicines, homeopathic medicines, this kind of thing. I worked in that field for about 15 years. Then I got um, increasingly interested in the psychological and emotional dimensions of, of health and well-being. I saw that that was what a lot of people really struggled with. And I saw that there were things that I needed to learn so that I could help those people better. So that led me on a, a further path of learning and training um, various techniques to help people psychologically and emotionally, which, which I kind of picked up along the way. And I continued working in that field and then over time, what I started to see was that um, I could help some of the people some of the time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it was sustainable. Uh, often it wasn't. You know, people would get better for a while and then they'd have some other issue, you know. And I, at that point, I couldn't tell what, uh, why, why somebody got helped and why another person didn't. Mm. This was a source of frustration for me. You know, I would use a, a, a process or a technique with someone, it would work very well, one person. Next person, seemingly in a similar condition, wouldn't work at all. Mm -hmm. or, or even with the same person at different times, you know, I would get a, a really good result initially, and then they would be kind of diminishing returns as time went on. I knew there was something about this process I hadn't quite understood, kind of the underlying dynamics of um, psychological well-being. And that, gradu that search, if you like, it just led me to um, finally in 2011, I, I heard about this um, the understanding of the mind called three principles. And first of all, I was amazed that I'd never heard of it because I thought I'd found everything in the field that was any good by that point. But it turns out that um, this was something that had been discovered really outside of the field of psychology and psychiatry. Um, as an individual who had his own uh, life-changing insight or transformation, a, a chap named Sidney Banks. Mm -hmm. And what he came to see was uh, uh, really how his, how his own mind worked to create his emotional and psychological experience. 
And he found a, a way to articulate that so that other people could also see that for themselves. And the effect of that, when what he realized on himself was that it restored his psychological and emotional well-being uh, almost instantly uh, and in a, in, a, in a permanent way, in a sustainable way. And not only that, but he was able to share that understanding with others so that they in turn could get their own insight and find their own mental well-being as well. So it seemed to be transferable. You know, it wasn't something that just affected the, the person who, who had the original insight. And there was something about this that really struck a chord with me. Um, I had come to associate when, when people got better, mm -hmm. um, I started you know, to believe that it was because of what I was doing at the time. You know, I thought maybe this, this technique could help the person and maybe the reason it didn't work for this person was the wrong technique, you know, or we didn't do it enough. You know, we need to work harder yeah. or maybe we need to dig deeper and find the core issue. But what Sidney Banks seemed to be suggesting was no, none of those were actually true. The only reason that people really change and transform is because is when they have their own realization. Mm -hmm. Now, that really struck a chord with me. And when I look back through my own um, work, I thought, actually, that's true. Yes. You know, I, I could suddenly see that irrespective of the technique that I was using, and sometimes in, in spite of the technique I was using, right. people changed in a, in a helpful way when they had their own insight, they had their own shift in, in understanding. So that completely changed the basis of my work. It, rather than uh, coming up with processes to, to put people through, what I realized was that my work really was about creating a space where people could have their own insight, mm -hmm. could have their own realization. And what they could have insight into was how their experience gets created. So they had an understanding about that and a recognition of their own innate well-being, which maybe they'd lost sight of. Mm -hmm. And it sounds very, very simple, but that's partly what I love about it. The simplicity of it really appealed to me. And um, what I found is that it's, it's really, as it, since it's formed the basis of my work for the last six or seven years, it really has provided the missing piece in, in my own work and also a lot of my colleagues who've mm -hmm. come to this understanding with you know, similar but different backgrounds to my own from different disciplines. That's right, we were talking about uh, uh, someone I know, uh, a psychiatrist called Rani Bora, and she wrote a book, and that's how I found out about the three, three principles. It's become quite a movement, hasn't it? It has, and in relatively short time, although that's in some way misleading because um, Sidney Banks had his first realization back in 1973. Mm -hmm. So it's taken a while, let's say. Uh, you know, he's, he just started sharing what he understood with whoever would listen. Mm -hmm. Gradually and very slowly, a number of people who worked in the psychological field started to pay attention. But it's been a slow burn. It really has. And only now, I think, we're reaching some kind of a critical mass where people are waking up to it in, in considerably larger numbers. I think you've gone through what a lot of uh, people who do, who do therapy go through, the, the realization, sudden realization that it's nothing that you do. And it's, it's, the, uh, it's the person in front of you who does all the work. That's right. And, and I kind of knew that, but I didn't, I didn't know it a hundred percent. And you still didn't have a process of how to do it. Yeah. I didn't have a, a consistent way that I could, um, I could base my work on that realization. So it still looked to me like I needed certain, you know, I needed to do certain things or the people I was working with needed to do certain things That's right. in order, you know, in order to recover their, their well-being. Well, through this understanding, I came to see that actually that's not really true. It's simpler than that. Okay. And, and so this is what you're going to speak to us about at the uh, co convention in October. The yes. Three principles and, and a simple concept of uh, bringing it all together. That's right. And what I've seen, uh, what I love about it is that it's, it's not in conflict with anything that any other practitioners are already doing. Mm. You know, it can, it can dove dovetail beautifully with any kind of, um, psychotherapeutic practice, counseling practice. What it will do though, it simplifies people's work. It makes work simpler for practitioners. Mm -hmm. They don't have to work so hard. <laughs> That's yeah. one of the things that uh, practitioners quickly realize is that you've probably been making too much effort, more than is necessary to, to get the de desired results. And that people have more resources within the site side themselves than we ever realize. Yeah. You know, that are just, just waiting to be uncovered. And we don't have to do, in fact, we can't really do 
that uh, that self-healing on their behalf it it has to come from within the person it's only what people realize for themselves mm -hmm. that sustains them going forward so it's it's really it's not um it's not a method of giving people tools and techs and techniques it's an approach that helps people to understand something about themselves that they haven't understood before mm -hmm. once they really have that understanding in an insightful way i.e they see it for themselves you know not just as a concept but they actually have realization about it um, then they have something which they take forward with them in, in their life. They don't have to keep working on it or remembering it. Intriguing. Um, can you tell us what the audience, uh, the, the delegates who come to your particular talk will get out specifically from? Uh, what I hope is initially, I mean, obviously in the short talk, I can only really scratch the surface, but mm -hmm. what I would hope is that people will will get a sense that there is some there's a, there's a truth in this understanding which could be useful to them mm. and i've always looked for things that are not only interesting but actually helpful <laughs> you That's know i've right. got a very practical orientation so what i would hope is that they'll they'll hear what they'll hear in what i'm talking about is the practical implications of this understanding um because they are quite profound and they have the potential to, as I say, not only simplify people's work, but also to enable people to regain their, their well-being that might otherwise be considered, let's say, beyond help. You mm. know, there are many, many, many examples uh, within this field now of people who've, who've been able to recover from uh, decades-long uh, issues. I, I myself have seen that with people who've suffered with, uh, let's say, depression for more than 30 years. And a single realization has put that person back in touch with their well-being. Mm. I, I didn't know that was possible before yeah. coming across this understanding. You know, I, I had certain, in my mind, I had the idea, for example, that if someone's been suffering and struggling psychologically for a long time, it would probably take a long time for them to get better. Um, and that there were maybe some people for whom the best they could hope for is, you know, is a good coping strategy. Mm. that they wouldn't necessarily be able to to recover their well-being what i've come to see through this understanding which i would hope to share with the delegates is that everyone still has intrinsic well-being inside of themselves and i mean everyone and that doesn't mean everyone experiences it all the time of mm. course you know that's self-evident but everyone has the capacity to recognize and reconnect to the well-being that is dormant inside them Again, I didn't really know that as a truth. I, I, I kind of intuited that might be so, but um, this approach, it really gives you a practical means to help people to access that well-being. Sounds amazing. And sounds like it integrates perfectly with, uh, with what we're trying to achieve, that health is more than just one thing. Uh, yeah. With a, and it, yeah, it's looking at the whole picture. I'm going to ask you one particular extra question because you've answered the rest of mine in all your talks that that as a teacher with years of experience under your belt, what do you think is the key to healing or making someone better? So I'm looking for something personal that you do or that you think makes the most difference. Hmm. I would, first of all, I would, I would draw it. It's a nice question. I, I, it's a deep question. <laughs> hmm. Um, there's a number of different things that I can say in response. The, the first would be initially, I would draw a distinction between healing and curing, yes. you know, because they're, they're not the same. And I think we tend to use the term curing when we talk about um, getting something fixed, you know, getting a problem addressed or, you know, going to a medical practitioner to, to get rid of my symptoms. You know, I want, I want this disease to, to be sorted out. We tend to use curing in that in that respect, and that's all well and good. I mean, there's, I'm not saying anything against that, or that anybody shouldn't do that. But the word healing has its roots in the word uh, to do with wholeness. And for me, healing is—I mean, curing is—is is not always possible for everybody. You know, there are there are limits to what medicine can cure, as we know, including alternative medicine. Whereas healing, I believe, is possible for everyone because healing is pointing people back to their own wholeness. And I've worked with people who were even in the midst of, let's say, a lot of pain or serious illness or even close to dying. They were still able to heal in the sense that they could still recognize and reconnect to the wholeness within. 
And how do we know that's happened? Well, they they find peace of mind. Mm. Um, they find a sense of ease and even happiness right in the midst of what's, what might be going on for them uh, physically as well as, you know, to do with the circumstances of their life. So to me, that's the true healing is when a person uh, reconnects to, to peace of mind and they have a recognition of their own true nature, which is that they're not this body, you know, which is, is subject to the laws of, of physics and nature, <laughs> everything, you know, it's going to decay, it's, it's going to suffer. But the, the individual behind that form is, is, is something that is, is, let's say, formless and is not subject to the aches and pains that the, the body struggles with. That, that there is a, an aspect to the, to the human being that um, is already whole and complete. That to me is what, what healing is really about. And that's what I'm interested in helping people to realize for themselves. I mean, that was a very deep answer and uh, so it rings so true to, to all our work. Um, so thank you very much for sharing that with us. And I'm really looking forward to listening to your talk. I may not be able to do it in person because there's so many different ones to choose from. And this will help some of our delegates choose to attend yours. There's so many amazing speakers and I'd love to to attend yours and i'm sure um if i can't and i'm sure i'll see you and in, in your other venues doing uh your talks and your teaching elsewhere so uh, thank you very much to everyone for listening to this uh and uh, choosing this interview to listen to out of all the others out there so remember that your the tickets are um available on the website and you get, get them early uh, so we are the Integrative Health Convention in London on the 13th and 14th of October 2018 at the Park Plaza Victoria. So you can get it um, as a gift. You can have the discount code PODCAST10, which I'll put um, in the video uh, and the link below so that in, and it'll give you a 10% discount from as a gift from us to you for your time. So what we would love to see you in October in London. Where you, when you'll get the opportunity to meet uh, Ian in person and the rest of our speakers and myself, and and all these people will be sharing so much more with you back then. All right, great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. <laughs>